Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. In the context of the gospel reading today, the disciples have just failed in their ministry. And Jesus had to step in and clean up their mess. You see, they were unable to perform the most basic parts of the ministry that Jesus had equipped them to do. Because they had not really understood his teaching before they went out to practice, they failed miserably. It's here in the face of the disciples' failure where we pick up the gospel story today. The disciples are traveling with Jesus, and even despite the fact that they have failed their test, as a good teacher, Jesus just keeps on teaching them, having faith in them. Actually, here he teaches them for a second time, because nobody understood it the first time, that he is going to be killed and resurrect from the dead, the most fundamental part of Christianity, the most important of details. But sadly, even though they have the greatest expert of the faith in their very midst, they decide that even though they don't understand what is going on or what he is talking about, they're just going to pretend like they do. Truly sad, really. The truth that close to them, and they reject it out of fear. Well, Jesus and the disciples keep on walking together on their journey, the story goes. And they come to the town of Capernaum, somewhat of a home base for Jesus and the disciples. There, Jesus asks the disciples about what they were talking about on the walk. Instead of talking about what really mattered, instead of asking questions about Jesus' most important teaching on his death and resurrection, they decided to waste their time arguing over the most stupid of topics. They decided to waste their effort and their time with the expert at their disposal, arguing about who is going to be the greatest when Jesus comes into his kingdom. And Jesus knows it, so he calls them out hard, asking, but knowing the answer, what were you arguing about on the way? They stand there with their tails between their legs, knowing that they have failed yet again to be the disciples that Jesus calls them to be. But what does Jesus do? Does he give up on them? No. Does he yell at them and call them names? No. Jesus, true to his rabbinic character in his expertise, sits them down in love to teach them what he wants them to understand. And very bluntly, he tells them that they have it all wrong that in their attempts to figure out this hard world and the unknown about the kingdom of God, they have gone down a rabbit hole and they are completely lost yet again. He explains to them that they ought not spend their time contemplating about selfish ideals of grandeur, about who's to be the greatest in the kingdom of God. Because talk like that is only proof of how far they have grown away from what Jesus truly wants them to understand. So he sits them down to help help them and explains that the kingdom of heaven is the very opposite of what their opinions demonstrated. And the kingdom of God is it is the lowest, lowest of the low on the earth today who will be the greatest in the kingdom of God. All of this time and energy spent on conspiracy theories and fantasy about the kingdom was completely wasted. In our gospel today, we witness Jesus share with his disciples, that's us to remember, the secrets of the kingdom. Jesus doesn't keep anything from us, sharing the biggest divine secrets like the foretelling of his death and resurrection. And we know that no matter how far we go down a rabbit hole looking for answers from unqualified sources, that he never gives up on us. Let me repeat that. He's never going to give up on us as his students and followers, no matter how foolish we are. The gospel demonstrates today so clearly how Jesus always reaches out to us and tries to bring us back when we go our own way. When we get selfish, he points out to the cruciform nature of what it means to be his true followers. When we get prideful, 
He calls us out and reminds us that following him is about servanthood. When we fail, he catches us. When we don't act in loving ways toward each other, he corrects us. Jesus always tries to teach us the things that he knows we don't understand, even if we pretend like we do. For he knows the truth, and there is no hiding it from him. And he seems perfectly convinced that we can understand it too, at least eventually. Jesus shares the most amazing fact of the gospel, his coming death and resurrection to his closest disciples long before it ever happens. But, and buts don't get bigger than this one, they miss what Jesus was teaching them because they were so focused on themselves and their opinions and their bickering about who is greater than the other. Their goal of proving the other wrong took so much of their attention that they missed the greatest secret ever shared from heaven for a second time, mind you. That Jesus would rise from the dead, therefore making it possible for all humans to do as well. This is what all of the good news is based in. And their arguing about who was the greatest hid it from them. To me, it kind of sounds like the modern world where we argue all the time over any and everything we possibly can. And I am beginning to wonder, like it was with the disciples, what we are missing today when we do this. Jesus is right here in our midst trying to tell us what is really going on and we are too busy with what concerns us to see the truth. What could we be missing? What could we be missing? Sometimes we get stuck in our own little world and miss the real important things going on. But the lesson here in the gospel today is one that we definitely don't want to forget. It says that welcoming the least of these is to welcome God into our lives. Jesus says that whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. How might we be servants of all instead of wanting to raise ourselves and hold ourselves up as right all the time over and against the other? How we, might we practice this amazing welcome that Jesus tells us is so important? How can we admit that being right is less important than relationships? Are we missing the bigger picture in the modern world? like the disciples did in the gospel story? I think we may be. Yes, truth is very important, and hopefully we can all agree on that, but more important than love of neighbor? I think not. Truth is a virtue, but never at the expense of love. Social media makes it so easy to cut ties. You just click the unlike button. I bet we've all done it. And while that might be good to break hurtful ties at times, sadly we have brought this practice of the unfollow button out into the real world too often and it is hurting us. We just leave relationships when they aren't exactly what we want. We disassociate ourselves from everybody who thinks differently than us. And it's sad because each year, statistically, Americans get lonelier and lonelier. Eventually, we will disagree with everyone about something, and keeping this up will guarantee to make us, you and me, part of this statistic of loneliness. We choose loneliness over welcome. We choose being right over love way too much. This is the key teaching today. Jesus measures greatness not by success, but by service. He identifies with a child who is not powerful, but vulnerable. So, follow Jesus' teaching and let yourself be vulnerable. Maybe let yourself be vulnerable and just let the argument go. Maybe know that you are right and let that be enough. Maybe surround yourself with people 
who just don't understand what you know and still love them unconditionally anyways, like Jesus always did. As I saw recently from somebody here in church, and yeah, I do check Facebook pages, so if you don't want your pastor to see it and use it in a sermon illustration, then don't post it. Anyways, I saw something that said I've finally reached a maturity where when somebody says 2 plus 2 equals 27, I look them right in the eye and say, heck yeah, it does. Let's have a beer together. This is the welcome and acceptance that Jesus is talking about today. This is the community building stuff that I know Jesus really wants to see in us. This is the service and love toward neighbor that the entire gospel is about. I invite us all today to recognize the failure of the disciples in the gospel story and to not follow their bad examples, but instead follow the good example of Jesus here. Let Jesus' teachings throughout the Bible about love and service and forgiveness and reconciliation take hold in our lives. Like the disciples in the gospel story, Jesus is walking with us and continues to teach us. And yes, Like the disciples in the gospel, we have failed more than once at putting Jesus' teachings to work. But Jesus has not given up on us and never will. He's going to be there to keep trying until we get it. And Lord, let that be soon for the sake of the world. This world is getting so lonely. And we can't afford to fail any longer to love as Jesus does. Help us. Amen.